Hello Youtubers, this is Cessna Ace back again with another video. This video is going to be a lot more involved than it's going to turn out being because my mouth is just throbbing. But I'm going to show the uh, foreign CDs that I've added to my collection since the last time I showed any. Plus I went by uh, yesterday and today at the flea market over this weekend because my Newcomb turntable, those of you who have seen videos of this turntable you you know what it looks like it's yellow and it's a really great turntable but the stylus on the vinyl side was beginning to wear significantly the stylus for 78s was in fine condition but i had remembered that the owner of yesterday and today out at the flea market bill had told me that it didn't matter what the player was or who made it, or when they made it, he would be able to get a copy or a replacement stylus. So I took it out there and um, he picked up his iPad or whatever and he was flipping around and he said, um, okay, um, $19 and whatever cents. Great. You ordered it. Uh, they're shipping it and he said he should have it by Saturday. In the interim I have bought a second portable by a different manufacturer and the difference between these two portables is like the difference between night and day. The one that I just got uh, over this past weekend is a two-speed 33 and a third and 45 rpm. Now, the Newcomb is a four-speed 78, 45, 33 and a third and 16. 16 was primarily used um, for transcriptions and for kids records uh, that were storybooks, that sort of thing. This one that I picked up sounds like a cheap transistor radio from the 70s, whereas the Newcomb has a rich, full, stereophonic, punchy sound to it. You crack crank that puppy up, it can get loud. So the thing is, that, nah, 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 just rinky dink. So I can't wait until I get a replacement or the replacement for the stylus comes in and I can get that back because I really miss that player. Now I do have a handful of 45s that I'm going to show only because they stand out in my mind anyway. Um, I'm always on the lookout for labels that I've never heard of. This is obviously a promotional copy, although it doesn't say promotional copy on it. Some labels said promo. Some would identify them as promotional copy, some DJ copy, some radio station copy, some would say nothing at all, as is the case with this one. Some would use stock copies, which the same thing you would find in the store. Uh, but what gives this away as a promotional copy is that it has the exact same song on both sides. It's on the Sochar label. The group is Bullies and the song is The Broad Street. It's apparently a label out of Philadelphia. Now we had been talking in the past about how it appeared to both of us that vinyl was making a comeback. And at one point he had told me weeks ago, weeks ago, that um, there was a record pressing facility in Tennessee that had shut down years ago. But it had recently reopened and was pressing vinyl again. And I thought, well, yesterday, which would have been the day before yesterday now, I had watched a program on History Channel 2. It was Modern Marvels and within Modern Marvels they have several sub-series that they do like um, engineering disasters and 
coin operated and food tech and retro tech well they were doing one on retro tech uh, day for yesterday and they did a segment about vinyl records and they went inside of this facility I think it was called rainbow they replicate both CDs and manufacture vinyl records they started off just doing vinyl, but then when CD came out, they started replicating CDs, and they do both. And the owner of that company said they've noticed a trend. The uh, demand for CDs has been going down, 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 down. The many attributed th this to the advent of downloadable content. But that doesn't explain what else he said, which is the demand for vinyl has been going up and up and up and up to their, where they're having to uh, increase their capacity again to manufacture more and more vinyl. And then they said something which kind of surprised me, which is that the number one age uh, demographic for collecting vinyl are those between the ages of 18 and 24. So it's just, it's not just, just us fogies uh, holding on to the format. Um, it's a lot of young people too. And uh, one of my price guides mentioned that this is a price guide that covers CDs and 78s and 45s and LPs and you name it. The number one collectible format for music worldwide is the seven inch vinyl single so just this one I picked up today my Sharona by the neck and this one still had its sticker on it it was 96 cents at Kmart I thought I'd show that and I and because I rarely find uh, picture sleeves for this label and this one has a picture sleeve I thought I'd go ahead and show it it's the dot label dot was at one time owned by ABC and then they were owned by Paramount or maybe it was the other way around but this particular release came when they were owned by Paramount Debbie Reynolds and it's in a picture sleeve. We own that album on vinyl. I know because I bought it for my wife. And uh, the owner of yesterday and day, today told me, who does he see come in and buy just loads and loads of vinyl? Teenagers. Well, I look very hard for records that are in as good a condition as I can find. I'm not always successful, but I do do that. Okay, I wanted to show this one because uh, this is one of the most um, I'm trying to think of the right word. Pirated is not quite right. Um, this is a record label that has one of the most uh, demonstrable problems with people making illegal fake copies and trying to pass them off as originals. When the Beatles uh, broke big in England, their label EMI, which was releasing uh, their stuff there under the Parlophone label, 
kept sending these singles to their American subsidiary, Capitol Records. And Capitol Records said, that won't play here. Uh, nobody will buy those. So they kind of shunted them off to a small independent label called VJ Records. You have to be very careful when you buy Beatles on the VJ label because it is one of the most um, problematic as far as uh, fakes being made. Now one of these days I'm going to have to do a video on this because in one of my price guides I have uh, it has a step-by-step picture-by-picture uh, process where it, it takes you through uh, the various variations on the real VJ labels and the fake VJ labels. Another one of the most commonly uh, faked labels and it pertains to pretty much anything they released was Sun Records. I didn't buy any Sun Records but I'm just letting you know. Now, for those of you who were alive back then, you will remember that if uh, a magazine wanted to include a copy of a record in a magazine, they used what they called flexi discs. The two biggest users that I ran across uh, when I was a kid were Mad Magazine, who would occasionally release a parody of, of a s song and include it in the magazine as a flexi disc and the other being Time Life. This I hesitate taking out of the protective plastic because it is mint condition. It has never been played. Not once. Speaking of the Beatles, did you know that there are a number of Beatles flexi discs? There was a British music magazine that was kind of obscure and not many people knew about it. So not many people know about these Beatles flexi discs that are on the Parlophone label. Well, yesterday and today out at the flea market, he has, a, he has several of them. And uh, I don't recall exactly how much they were, but they're pricey. And I had to show this because I like Stevie Nicks. My brother was in love with Stevie Nicks, and he kind of pushed me in her direction. And so now I love Stevie Nicks. I have several of her CDs. And this is obviously in a picture sleeve. And I've noticed, and I don't understand this whatsoever, but there is a practice that some people do when they're going through records at a rec used record store, as they'll find a valuable record in its original sleeve, they'll pull it out, they'll find a generic sleeve, and put it in the generic sleeve and buy that. When oftentimes, if you go through the price guides, Oftentimes, the picture sleeves are worth more than the records. So I just don't understand that at all. But it is, in fact, Stevie Nicks. I can't wait. I have a lot of picture sleeves, and I used to have a lot more. I kick myself, kick myself about this every time I think about it. But right after I bought my CD player, I needed a 10-speed. And I traded all my 45s for a 10 speed, and I had a lot of rock and roll and R&B records in picture sleeves from the late 50s and early 60s. Just said, I could kick myself for doing that. Anyway, this is my first picture disc. It's playable but I'm not going to play it. I paid all of one dollar for this.
Okay, now on to the CDs. This first one you can't technically call it a um, import because uh, it was published by, well, manufactured and marketed by Polygram Latino US, a division of Polygram Records on the Polydor label. This has 10 songs on it. Tracks 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are in English. Tracks 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 are in Spanish. Now sometimes Agneta is singing uh, the lead vocal in Spanish. Sometimes it's Anifrit. So now I have Ring Ring in English, Swedish, and Spanish. Okay, my Facebook page. Uh, I have in the past requested that people recommend to me groups or solo artists that I may not be familiar with, especially if they uh, are primarily known in another country. And one of my friends on Facebook suggested this Polish rock group. I had ordered uh, one of their CDs and I liked it enough to where I bought a second one. Strangely enough, this was printed in the UK, it says. Not in the EU. In UK. Printed in UK. And I like this CD so much that I've ordered a third one. Now I have a cousin whose grown daughter is a big fan of K-pop. But she wasn't really into this singer, although she has since told me that she loves this singer. This is one I found perchance on Yes Asia. And the way she tells her life story is that she auditioned for the various Korean uh, music labels and so forth over 20 times. And each time they told her, you have a beautiful voice, but unfortunately you're not pretty enough. She knew Japanese. Somehow a demo tape of hers wound up in Japan. They immediately snapped her up, and so her first album was released in Japanese, in Japan. Well, then she had she was suddenly in demand in Korea. I have her first Korean album. This is her second. And quite frankly, I don't know what they were thinking because I think she's kind of cute. She has her own Facebook page, by the way. Just search for Yunha. Okay, when I ordered this one, I didn't read the fine print. This is Yunha's third album, Growing Season but it's part B. So I've had to go back and uh, to US Asia and order her third album, part A. I don't know why they broke it up that way, um, but they did. And I absolutely love her voice. And uh, She's obviously gained quite a lot of popularity 
in Korea because whenever I find any uh, concert footage of her uh, her fans are just it's like they are, they adore her okay I've, I don't think I've shown this before just in case I haven't Falco I don't think this was released in the US it might have been but all of the uh, US releases that I have have a lot of English in with the German and this doesn't this was also manufactured in Germany forget the fact that on the disc itself it says made in EU in the the pamphlet and on the back of the case it says quite clearly made in Germany the songs are Titanic Monarchy Now Dance Mavisto Psychos Scandal, spelled S K A N D A L. Ya ja, Vibration, Propaganda, Time, Cadillac Hotel, and um, Lichtflug. I guess that's how you would pronounce it. And while most of his CDs, the ones that were released here, I, I thought it was cool the way he did it. He would start the vocal, lead vocal in German, and then he would switch to English. And the background vocalist would either um, switch to German or stay with him with English. But there would be a lot of back and forth bouncing around between English and, and German. Well, with this CD, there isn't. It's mostly German. Never mind the titles, most of which are, are English language titles. Um, it's mostly German. Now, I found another Falco album that I don't have that I've got ordered. I've got another Yoon Ha CD ordered. I have another one of their CDs ordered. And one of uh, my uh, friends who runs an abacentric channel. I can't remember if it's uh, Sad Looking Moon or Touche MCN. One of them uh, put up a video of a song from one of um, Ecta Defaultskog's English language solo albums. And it's like, well, wait a minute. I don't have that album. So I've had to order it. Never mind the fact that I have 11 of her albums. Uh, six of which are in Swedish but uh, I will have 12 when that arrives okay I think that about covers it until next time stay awesome